All right. I'll just, we'll record it just for just to be safe. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started if Larry joins and they can just hop in wherever we are at the time. Um, let me read our virtual meeting statement. Um, so, uh, good morning. Uh, the, I don't really know this is due to governor's orders anymore, but we are still virtual today. Um, and for virtual meetings, committee members will be muted until they're asked to be heard. And at that time, they'll be recognized and will be unmuted. Uh, when there is a vote, it will be necessary to take a roll call for the vote. A committee member will be recognized, raise their hand, and state their vote. Uh, today's meeting is a public meeting. The meetings will also be live streamed on the city's YouTube channel, which can be accessed um, through the website. And a recording of today's meeting will be available by next Tuesday uh, on the city's website. So let's, let's get started. Um, the first thing we need to do is approve the minutes. Uh, Mike was nice enough to send those out with the um, uh, information for today's meeting. And they are from July 27th, 2022. Uh, has everyone had a chance to take a look at those? Yes. We need a roll call. Um, oh, you're right. Yes. Brenda, thank you. Thank you. I got you. Uh, Gail Anderson. has it done this. Yeah, it has. It's We're good. Uh, Gail Anderson? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, Brenda Diggs? Mark Dunnigan? Here. Brian Heelan? Here. <clears throat> and Mike Wakeford. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Brenda, for reminding us. Um, so the, the minutes from July 27, 2022 were distributed. Has anyone had a chance to look at that? And does anyone have any comments or corrections they'd like to have made to the minutes? I vote we accept the minutes. I mean, I propose we accept the minutes. Second. Okay. We'll need a roll call vote for that as well, Mike. Okay. Uh, Gail Anderson. Aye. Brenda Diggs. Aye. Uh, Mark Dunnigan. Aye. Brian Heelan. Aye. And Mike Wakeford is not here. Okay. Good. Uh, well, so we are caught up on paperwork. Um, so Mike has done a good, really, really good job, I'm sure with others' help as well, uh, from the city to put together this final report of this committee. Um, and so the idea is that uh, we would present to the committee, or to the finance committee, excuse me, of the council on the 9th of May, um, give them an overview of what is in this report. <clears throat> They'll have a copy of it as well. And then ultimately, um, at the, after that presentation to finance, uh, we would dissolve the committee. So it's been four years now, uh, a little more than four years since the committee was uh, established uh, by the mayor. And I think we've done we've done an awful lot. Um, and Mike and I talked about this a little bit earlier uh, last week. Uh, the committee has done a lot, some some of it even sort of above and beyond what uh, just pure oversight of the bond projects. So Mike's done a great job of putting this together. And Mike, do you want to walk us through what you've got um, and, and give comments? And I can sort of weigh in as we go too. Yeah, so I was going to kind of walk through the, at a high level, the report at a high level, and just get your feedback and questions. And um, so let me share my screen. Get the PowerPoint up here. And move this. So can you all see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So um, let's just uh, jump into the agenda here. So we're going to talk a little bit at a high level about the, the final report that I sent out on Monday evening. And then we'll talk about, uh, we'll do a couple staff updates, give you all some information about the, the capital project piece of the update we gave to the that Scott gave to the Committee of the Whole of the City Council on February 27th. That was part of why we canceled our January meeting so that staff could focus on preparing a report uh, for that. And then as Mark's already kind of touched on, we'll talk a little bit about the May 9th Finance Committee meeting um, and the logistics of that. So 
jumping into the report uh, based on the resolution that was created by city council uh, the, re the the reports to council on the 2018 bond projects need to ensure that the timing and location of projects are equitably distributed in all areas of the city ensure that projects are built in a cost effective manner and within the budget target and ensure that projects are built to acceptable standards of quality. So uh, currently we're showing 109 authorized 2018 bond projects with uh, just over 62% of those complete, uh, third, an additional 32% in progress, and six and a half percent are appropriated uh, in and in the pre-planning stages. We do want to update the council on the status of projects by ward. There are a lot of bars on this graph, um, but as you can see, uh, progress is being made with over half of the projects uh, complete in each ward, uh, with the exception uh, of the west ward, which is just under just under 50%, four out of the nine projects are complete. Um, and just as a note, there are 17 multi-ward projects that are not shown in the report and, and for you for your information, there are four of those are currently complete and four are not yet underway with the remaining nine in progress. And multi-ward would mean that it's in it's happening in more than one ward. It's yeah, it it touches more than one uh, more than one ward. Yes. Yes. Or some of those are undesignated as well. Mm -hmm. But the, at this point. Uh, any other questions on the board piece? Okay. Looking at the status of the projects by bond order or category, starting on the lower left, um, we've completed one out of the, the the six economic development projects. Really, that funding is available uh, for whenever it's needed from an economic development standpoint. Uh, on the housing development side, uh, one is complete, but a number of other ones are underway. The Choice Neighborhoods Phase 1 is, is uh, under development and going well, uh, according to our, our housing director. On the public safety side, uh, Fire Station 13 is complete, and the public safety communication system should be complete uh, this fall. And at, the, at, its, at its last meeting, City Council authorized the negotiation uh, on some property for the public safety uh, training facility. That's all also heading in the right direction. Um, there on, on the, the parks and rec side, many of the major projects are complete uh, along with much of the facility renewal work. Uh, currently we're trying to wrap up the rec center security projects and, uh, and some other smaller projects. Uh, on the streets and sidewalks piece, the street resurfacing is done, as are a couple of the other uh, concrete-based street rehabilitations. And as you can see, the, uh, many of those are in the planning and design phase and, and moving forward. Any questions there? Mike, I don't, I don't have a question, but this, I guess when you get the information in a different fashion than, than what we've seen, and this is, this is a really good, good, fashion to, to kind of review things with i was just a little surprised when you had the current budget and spending commitments that the streets and sidewalks is only 56 percent of the money has been spent it and i if if roberts taught me anything over four years it's that streets are really important to everyone and there's not enough money for streets yeah um, so it, i mean this stuff is all going to get taken care of. Do we have a time frame? So, so Brian, that, this is a very timely question, I'm going to say, because the next slide here is looking at, at kind of the summarized um, current uh, budget and spending commitments. And let me circle back to your, your question here in a sec, Brian, if I, if okay. I, if I may. Um, so, yeah, if you look kind of at the, at the bottom line of this table, can see that the total appropriated the 126 um 0.5 million is is higher than the 122 million that was authorized for the 2018 bond projects that was due to us adding some funds from either ncdot or other city funds where we 
where we needed to. Um, but the, you know, I think the, the bottom line is we've got 88 and a half percent of these um, funds committed to specific projects and 60, almost 68 percent have been spent or encumbered. So from a bottom line perspective, I, I think we're in good shape. Um, you know, the, one of the areas where we're lagging behind there is economic development. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, those funds are available if we, if we need them. Uh, and, and the next couple slides talk about really the uncommitted pieces of um, what's what's kind of left out there to be committed. But um, as, as Brian noted, you know, we've only spent 56% of the um, streets and sidewalk money. And so there are a lot of the larger Winston-Salem DOT projects yet to come. Those are mostly in the planning stages. And yes, they are going to happen. Uh, the multi-use path, uh, the Business 40 uh, corridor uh, improvements. Many of those are, are uh, Polo Road improvements. All of those are are in the works and going to happen, but they are they have been slowed by lack of staff from either our side, NCDOT consultants, etc. But yes, they are, um, and we get when we when we presented uh, when Scott presented that information to City Council, a lot of those projects are on their tier one list of things that they want addressed. So um, you'll see those here in a little bit as well. Brian, does that sort of address your question? Yeah. Like, yes, but and do but do we know like when they'll be done, like completed? Is there a, a time frame, or is it still really just too 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 new to do that? I'm going to say a lot of them. We don't really know when they're going to be done. Um, I, I think the from a planning and permitting and working with NCDOT, um, a, you know, a good example is the the Liberty and Main two-way conversion, which I think you know Jeff Fansler updated us on you know nine months or or so ago. That has been slowed down by relocating Duke Energy poles um, and and right of way issues and. and so those were unforeseen circumstances that have slowed that project down significantly. And, and so I think when, when you look at these larger, more complicated transportation projects, once we, we get into them, they take us longer than we anticipated. Okay. So, and some of them do have some, some dates that we presented to council, but many of them, I think are, they go, you know, they're going out a, more than two years. To get those completed okay so I, I do think we need to have a very good explanation for that because um some of those were those are projects obviously that are so visible to everybody so it's it, when we do the presentation that that the community sees it at the um at the committee meeting i think just explaining the the reasons for it would would help a lot Understood. I and mean, we will we'll we'll put together some talking points for Mark, um, and that'll be one of them. Were there any projects that were kind of floated? I don't want to say more than less than committed to, but that neighborhoods were aware of that have kind of not met or have met the acts and aren't going to happen, like sidewalks around Peachy Road. You know, are, are, do people know whether that's still going to happen or not? So that's a that's a good question, uh, Brian. And you know, the the Petrie Road sidewalk, I believe, is a 2014 bond project. Okay, I'm uh, sorry. And so when we have a number of, I believe there are four or five 2014 uh, sidewalk bond projects that we're still um, that we're still working on to to finish. But yes, Petrie, I want to say was either bid once and came in higher than anticipated or is being bundled with another sidewalk project. Um, but yes, are, are we, could we do more to uh, engage the community for when those, the timing of those projects and um, when they're happening, we, we probably could. I think Robert and his team, Robert Prestwood, are, have probably been in contact with some of the neighborhood folks there so right. that they know um, when when that's happening 
Well, I do think that's really important because you, we all know there'll be another bond referendum, but the public doesn't know the difference between this year's bond referendum or whether something was done with other monies or whatever. So those, you know, I think Brian's made a good point about those neighborhood projects. Those are the ones that people really pay attention to. And I mean, I think they can understand why everything can't get done at once, but even if it's not this bond project, we probably should make some reference to some of those projects. Yes, thanks, Helen. We will, and I, I think it is it is our responsibility to keep whether on a citywide basis or more at a, a local neighborhood level to keep those folks informed as to what's happening um, with projects that they're expecting or that impact them. I guess another question I have, Mike, is what, how much of the delays in not completing the projects has been caused by supply chain and lack of resources as a result of COVID and what we have experienced. And, and is that part of what your report will include? It, it, Brenda, it is. I think that's that's part of the big picture. And that's part of when, when Scott did his presentation to uh, council at the end of February, Kind of the big picture from a capital side is we yes we have these 2018 bond projects but as i mentioned we also have 2014 bond projects we've also um, appropriated 180 million dollars worth of other funding over the past 10 years for projects uh, at the fairgrounds at lowry street to do roofs many of them significant uh, a new uh, transformational center on liberty street uh, all of those all of those things are going on while the bond projects are going on. So with reduced staff, with supply chain shortages, with, like I said, reduced staff on the um, staff on the city side, plus from consultants and contractors. Uh, Meadow Lark Road is a good example of a, of a contractor situation where they've had to reallocate resources to other projects. And now they're, re they're bringing them back to our project uh, to try to move that forward as quickly as possible. So I think we've, uh, and Scott, jump in here if you want to, but I think we've tried to navigate this as, as well as we can and as well as, as we could with shifting priorities, uh, shifting dynamics, and um, trying to keep council as informed as we can as, to, as the, to the lay of the land and where we're heading. Yeah, Mike, the thing I'll add to that from the meeting that we had with City Council and Brenda, I don't think that we've looked at every single project and delineated this one has been most affected by this. Mike's hit a couple of the examples, but one of the things that we really tried to, to tell the City Council is, is staff capacity is becoming a problem as the organization is hovering around 20% vacancy. And so we don't have the same number of hours to allocate to managing some of the projects. And Mike will show you kind of this tier one versus tier two uh, uh, delineation of projects for city council. And we're trying to be very diligent in allocating staff resources there. So you do have a lot of the, the issues like the, the downtown street conversions that have been affected uh, by logistics issues and Duke Energy, but we are really hitting ahead in certain places where we don't have the staff capacity to manage all of the projects at once. And it's really causing some of the things that are, are lower priorities for those timelines to be stretched out even further. Thanks, Scott. The other thing, Mike, I would mention as it relates to this particular slide, um, if, if you took economic development out of this scenario, mm -hmm. we're at like 96% committed. Yes. Which to me is a huge win. Um, you know, economic development has always been one of the one of the buckets, if you want to call that, of money that didn't have necessarily a particular project associated with it. It was there for when those types of things arose. Um, so I, to me, I would sort of almost, you can't take it out of the analysis because it needs to be in, on the slide, but um, in terms of figuring the percentages, I'd say we're doing a really good job of having everything committed. And I, and I think we're doing a pretty darn good job at having things completed. You know, we just need to get those last few projects across the finish line. Yes, agreed. Thanks, Mark. And I think council knows that the economic development money is there when they need it. And that, um, so... So kind of, just just from that slide, I mean, is there a reason why they're the they're in that order? Is it just because it's well, it's not even alphabetical. Uh, 
Personally, I, I just wouldn't put the one where the furthest behind at the top because a lot of times people look at that and you know it doesn't. So if there's not a reason for the order of that, you may want to look at maybe just ordering them by you know some other method. Okay, I think that's how we've 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 shown it, but I don't know that anybody is um anybody would would care too much if we reordered them. Um, so I'll, Scott, I'll talk to Scott, Scott about that. It may draw more attention if we reorder it because that's the way it's been shown. We'll, we'll talk about it, um, internally, but to, to kind of dial in on the economic development piece, that is the biggest part of the uncommitted funds and. Yeah, there's $4 million for land acquisition, $2.5 million for uh, some redevelopment on Liberty Street, $1.6 million left for commercial redevelopment, $1.6 million for sites and infrastructure, and uh, uh, $700,000 for the Southeast Ward economic development. Land acquisition, has that, where is the land? It's to be determined. Okay, so that that is just a number that's there. Yes, that that has been set aside to acquire land for future economic development uh, opportunities. And that, is that the same thing for commercial redevelopment? Yes, commercial redevelopment is uh, designed to um, provide redevelopment in already existing commercial areas. Mike, the commercial redevelopment is you may have heard of as RUCA before, those right. types of things, and CURBA. So you can do anything from facade improvements to complete redevelopment of commercial areas in, in cited areas by council. So it's more, it's not as specific as Liberty Street redevelopment, the bulk of these dollars, or Southeast Ward economic development. The other buckets are just sort of all over the city as I look at it. Is that a good interpretation? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and that a picture is worth a thousand words. So part of that explanation to me says that it is it's fair and equitable with what we have. Thank you, Brenda. And that's how people will look at it, I think. Any other questions or comments on that slide? I was going to say, Brenda, I kind of view that slide as a call to action for council. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Pockets of the community, we're calling them to action even more so. Right. And we feel like, you know, let, let's face it, that when projects fall by the wayside, they tend to fall perception by the wayside for areas that need them most. So. Well, and it's not our purview, but the call to action needs to be to fill some seats in, in your guys' departments. Well, but that's a problem everywhere. I'm not, you know, I don't know what they're doing, but that name a place that's not looking to do that. It's a big issue. And yeah, I, I agree. I have the answer. Do you, Gail? You were at the chamber. <laughs> Well, right now, there really isn't no answer. Things are starting to pick up. Um, I, Mark, I'm sure you've seen that in, in your business. But, you know, I mean, I think people really underestimated starting back in 2008. And then when COVID came through, what the yeah. impact was going to be on. I mean, anybody that could postpone a decision did, basically. Yeah. And now it's starting. They're starting to, you know, come back. So it's just, we just have... You know, we just have to hang in there for a little while. But I, the way I see that slide is, the way I would position it is, and if an opportunity presents itself, we're able to recruit somebody or someone, you know, is looking at a major expansion. We have the resources to bridge whatever gaps there are to make that project happen. And that is a good thing, rather than we're scrambling around, somebody wants to build a new plant or a new office or whatever, and we're scrambling around saying we can't fix, we can't, you know, add the lane that we need in the streets or whatever. So it's really, it's a great place to be with having those funds right now. 
Does that include companies that are looking at Winston-Salem that might want to relocate here? And is this the bucket of monies that we offer to as an incentive to those companies, or is that a different bucket? Well, it's not the, it, it's partly that. So let's say somebody's looking to come here and they're looking at a location and they need um, water and sewer line run, or they need, a, you know, some kind of improvement to the roads, et cetera, that in, in the right circumstances could be used for that. But where you, but there are other incentives that can be used based on, um, you know, other needs that they might have. So this is a piece of that puzzle. So mm -hmm. if there is an, if there is an institution today that is looking to relocate and consolidate all of their facilities in one location in Winston-Salem, would they be eligible perhaps for money out of this bucket? If they're just moving the chairs on the deck, it would be highly unlikely unless they were creating a lot of jobs and doing a lot of capital investment. But if you're talking about moving deck chairs from some other county or state, yes. Yeah, well, they would be relocating. Yeah, if you're talking about the relocation, you know, we the only company I can think of in recent times that has gotten any incentives for staying has Cook Medical. And that was an unusual situation because they literally, um, you know, they came to Whitaker Park, but they were adding jobs, but that was, they, they, were, they weren't fitting exactly the way the guidelines were, but the city was able to work it out so that we could retain them because Stokes County was very appealing to them. Well, I was specifically referencing IFB Solutions, who has an, uh, a view to consolidate Mm -hmm. bringing people into this community as well. And the added dimension of that is that there are people who are sighted or sightless or visually impaired, whatever term is used. Right. Uh, yeah, I would this, also this ask in, in the case of IFB, <clears throat> if they're registered as a for-profit or non-profit business, because that would change the... Um, the statutory authority to provide them funding too, Brenda. That's something that we could could look at. But if it's a nonprofit organization, we have a little more of a broad based authority to work with them for specific purposes um, than if they are for profit business. Well, they are a nonprofit, but they operate like a for profit because they do contracts for the military. I mean, I don't. They're one of the best kept secrets in this community and state that people don't know about. Scott, let's go. Let's move on to the next um, okay. slide there. Okay. So the uh, so we have a couple other of other um, un, uncommitted buckets for bike and pedestrian improvements, uh, greenway development. That the the three hundred thousand left in parkland that is just the remainder of this. We we did do some parkland acquisition. That's the balance that's left. Um, and then there's housing acquisition and site preparation and housing development incentives. Those are part of the overall neighborhood revitalization uh, buckets there. Not, not much left there in any of those. No, no. So looking at you know what what is what are some major accomplishments we've made here? Uh, Salem Lake Park, Winston Lake Park, Haynes Park. Washington Park is recently completed. Bethania Rural Hall Pocket Park is recently completed. Um, we've done all the playground renovations, Carl Russell Rec Center renovations, Fire Station 13, and the the bond resurfacing was completed. Um, you know, most of this is in the in the recreation area, obviously, which we saw is the area that has the you know the the highest number of projects that have been completed. We're also still still working on Quarry Park Phase Two. They're still they're still finishing up some work on the playground. I know we were out there. It was six months or so ago. We were out there, and it looked like it was about to be done. They're still um, they're about to wrap that up. Fire Station Three is still in progress. As mentioned, the public safety radio communication system that nine million dollar uh, project from the city side it should be done this fall. They're continuing progress on the concrete streets, rehabilitation. And if any of you drive downtown at all and uh, may have seen a lot of the work for the first and second street two-way conversion, 
is is mostly done. They've got some signal work left to do there. Um, so that's kind of a, a status of from the project side of things. And Scott, has Jakira jumped on yet? She's on. Okay. Perfect. Mike, have, has Fire Station Three's so, budget challenges have those been solved? Hmm, that is a really good question, Brian. Um, we're actually well, getting ready to pot potentially bring some, hopefully the last um, uh, change to that project to city council for furniture and the IT pieces, the infra IT infrastructure pieces and the cabling, wiring, et cetera, um, in hopefully in May to council. And that should, that should put that one to bed. Good. So, um, as far as, far as uh, uh, that, uh, I think Robert feels good about that. Good. Uh, looking at the MWBE efforts for the 2018 bond projects, uh, we've we've got seven completed projects, and that's that that's we've got we've received the final MWE participation affidavit received. Obviously, we have a number of uh, other projects that have been completed. We don't where we don't have those uh, affidavits yet. Uh, five of those seven met or exceeded the participation goals. Uh, seven met or exceeded the contracted goals. So uh, we've got 13 other projects in progress where Jakir is getting uh, regular updates from the contractors. As I noted, several of those are complete and we're still waiting. We're awaiting the final affidavit there. Um, and you know, this will continue um, th these efforts for the remaining 2018 projects and work with Jakira and her team to ensure that we're getting the highest possible participation for, for all of the future projects, whether it's from the planning design perspective or the uh, construction perspective. Looking at just kind of a, um, when we're talking about the quality and scope of projects for this report, uh, it, it is worth mentioning, we've already talked about this, but much of what we've tried to accomplish with the 2018 bond referendum has been impacted by, by the pandemic, primarily via staffing shortages and supply chain issues. Uh, and you all saw those firsthand over the past four years, uh, understand the, the, um, how, how that has affected us. Uh, we're still navigating those uh, impacts while still battling you know rising costs um, from you know consultant the consultant side construction materials which may lead us to end up needing to reduce scope or value engineer pieces or parts out of these uh, uh, projects for all of our projects not just the 2018 bond projects but that those the increased cost piece um, if we're unable to find additional funding, which I think we have some transportation contingency funds um, and some recreation contingency funds that we appropriated July 1st of this year, um, because we knew that this was going to be an issue uh, for many of the, the projects that, that we haven't started yet. We have some buckets to, to pull from there, but just um, knowing that those are going to be challenges for us moving forward. Are there any projects that you're really worried about us not being able to do or do substantially what we told the voters we were going to do? I don't believe so at, at this point, Gail. I think we're I think we feel pretty good about where where we're heading, what we what we know um, on the 2018 side. I mean, for but for additional context, you have these 2014 sidewalk projects that we have, those budget estimates were done in you know, 2012 or 2013. The sidewalks are significantly more expensive now. So once we put those out on the street, Brian, to your example of Petrie, you know, those are, so we're trying, we know those things are coming. So we're trying to identify additional funding of uh, uh, project balances, something's, done, something's been completed, we'll move something in that same category of transportation project balance um, to use for another transportation project. Uh, we're trying to um, trying to do that 
to the best of our ability and look down the road uh, as, as best we can to know when those are those hurdles are are coming. Sorry, that was a really long winded answer. Scott, you should have cut me off. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the good news is I think with with this is that escalation seems to be slowing. Uh, that doesn't mean it's zero. It's still higher than CPI, but it's it's slowing. And so maybe the increased costs will not be as drastically increased as they might have been last year. We're, yeah, we're definitely hoping so. The, the piece I will add to that, Gail, I think the things that are funded through the 2018 and even 2014 bond projects are the highest priorities in many cases. And so what you might see is us abandoning a project that was funded with another source, be it two-thirds bonds, lobs, or some other funding source locally, where we may be stealing some of those other lower priority projects and those not being completed in order to complete the higher priority projects. Thanks, Scott. So that's kind of a quick overview of the um, of the report, and so we've kind of, we've got a couple of recommendations in there that staff and city council should work to complete the remaining 2018 bond projects as efficiently as possible, and staff should continue to provide regular reports and updates on the 2018 bond projects to council so that everyone is aware of what's going on and there's continued visibility. Uh, for all of the projects, for each ward, for all of the neighborhoods. Uh, is there anything else that you all would like to add as a, you know, a recommendation uh, from the from your perspective? Well, the only thing I, I just feel is critical that we, we continue to communicate to the community and not expect them to watch the city council meetings, but um, when we get ready for the next bond referendum, it, it would be really good if in their minds they said, well, they did what they said they were gonna do last time. And and so I would add, I'm sorry, we don't have anybody from marketing or communications on here, but you know, the general uh, communications that, that are done like in the journal and the Chronicle, just that message about the bond projects are almost completed, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's a really important for the community. You know, Gail, how many people, though, actually subscribe now to the Chronicle or the Journal? So how do we reach the, the, the communities to let them know? Is I guess, a question for staff. Is there other? Because they don't want council meetings. And, and the readership of both of those papers, I mean, and then you have people that aren't, believe it or not, into the technology. Right. So what do you do? I think you just have to do the best you can. Some of the city council people have newsletters. Um, I I get a couple of them but that I think they may all be electronic, but but that would be a something marketing for marketing communications to figure out is how how are the best ways to to communicate um, that we've you know we we did what we said we were going to do as a community. Gail, I think you're correct there. That's working with our marketing staff and hitting all of those different media types. I will tell you in the most recent resident survey, interestingly enough, more than 50% of residents said that their primary source of getting information about the city is from social media. And so that is an area that we are hitting more and more, but some of those traditional sources need to be hit as well, as well as trying to get TV spots, um, mm -hmm. things that we can do via press release and get the local news stations to pick up. Um, okay. Television and newspaper was the second behind social media. Occasionally, we've received something like a postcard or something of that nature from the city. I know budget is an issue, but, you know, I don't know, Joseph, if that is something that they do, but I know it, at times. And yes, the city council members do have meetings, but even with that, I've been disappointed when I've gone to some and, and people just tend to not show up. But do we still, as a city council, have an obligation to those people that don't. Bridget. So, okay, oh, so sorry, maybe yeah. we, we could have a celebration, like a, you know, a, I'm not talking about anything expensive, but some kind of a something where we we invite all the people who've, like, like all the people who are on the 
boards of the recreation centers, all the people that are involved and just have a big whoop de doo and say, you know, we've done all this stuff. We don't have to serve food or whatever, but just some kind of a public thing that we could get electronic media to, we could put on social media. Just a thought, Ed, Ed McNeil's gonna have a fit, but um, you know, just something visible and celebratory about this. Because otherwise it's pretty boring. <laughs> so Scott, I don't know. So Gail, I think to your to your point, if everybody is in, is interested in that, we could add a third recommendation here for you know city marketing staff to continue to communicate the, the, these new when these new projects are complete or, or ribbon cuttings, those types of things, so that folks can uh, by whatever channel whatever channel necessary i know they did marshall plat they just uh dedicated the new marshall park slash plaza that was on social media um we obviously got the fire station 13 event coming up oops sorry i skipped uh, um so uh, if everybody's uh, okay with that we can add another recommendation in the report uh for for that i think i think i would include starting or completing Right, because okay. there's a couple. Of, there's gotcha. a couple that we hadn't started yet, and that's. I mean, right. it's just a good opportunity to celebrate. Do you need a recommendation? I think that would be great. I second that recommendation. I think you. Again, we've said it for four years, and I know you guys live with it every day, but you can't communicate enough. No, no, absolutely not. And it's in every means possible. And, and to be quite frank you're losing us as communicators to I mean, not that we wouldn't want to, but it's not like I'm going to go out and say, Hey, I just had a meeting. Let me give you an idea what's going on. Cause you no, know, those aren't going to happen. We, we, I think we've been ambassadors and I think we'll continue to be, we just won't be updated. Brian, you're welcome to call me anytime you want an update. I want you to know that this is not the end. I, we're still here for you. If you know, if you're, you want to know what's going on, any of you want to know, call, give us a call or call Scott or whoever. They may not want to call me. It's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> Your plate's pretty full, Mike. So we have... all all of our plates are full, of it, but you you all have been great, and so we want to continue to do to to help you all help us as much as we can. So, and I I did before we go to the next item, um, before we kind of leave the report, I did I did just want to mention we did make note in in the report. Uh, regarding the very hard work that you all did on the CERT grant process and overseeing the COVID relief funds that came from the bond funding. And it, you know, as Mark kind of mentioned earlier, you all stepped outside of the original uh, kind of mandate of, of this committee. And we as staff are, are very, very appreciative of what you all, what you all did and how you all helped us. So um, please, please know that. As you get farther removed from those processes, you you realize that you probably enjoyed them more than you did at the time. That's a very diplomatic way of saying that, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but but I would also say because it was mentioned, I mean, are those wrapped up from a compliance standpoint and everything? Because I know that that was all getting wrapped up again with head count and people getting back. But I mean, we're. We're, everybody's good on, on how that all transpired with compliance after those dollars and were, were, were distributed. Scott, I'll yield to you. I'll answer that one by generally saying, yes, all of those funds have been distributed and reports have been generated on to whom and how that spending uh, was completed. And we've not heard any additional requests from the city council uh, or anything negative. I know that, um, Ben still has, uh, I think there's one organization that was trying to provide some additional uh, backup that had been requested. But other than that, the vast majority, 99% of those organizations had spent all of the money, provided all of the, the backup, and they've essentially been closed out. Good. Joseph, has anyone ever said to you that you your voice sounds just like Ben? I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think that <laughs> as a compliment. I, I had initially, I, if I did not see you and just heard that voice, I would say that's Ben. <laughs> I, I worked under Ben for 10 or 12 years, and so maybe I, I picked up a little bit of just the way that he speaks. Well, it's a good thing, let me just say. <laughs> Thank you. Much more soothing, much more soothing. It's just that calm demeanor, just, you know, yeah. 
it's it's been a great work though. The even the the grueling grants, it's been a great work. So, did you want to make a recommendation to approve the report with the uh, addition of the other the new recommendation about the communication piece? Yes, I think we, I think we would like to make yes. that. I, I guess we need a roll call on that too, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Gail. Yes. Uh, Brenda Diggs. Yes. Mark Dunnigan. Yes. Brian Healan. Yes. And as Mike Waitford, assuming has not joined us. Okay, thank you all very much for that. Um, we'll move on to our our next item, which is really just a, a a brief update of what was presented to the city council at the committee of the whole meeting on uh, February 27th. There were other components of that meeting other than the capital project side, but there was a significant update on projects. So we're gonna focus on that part and what it means for the remaining 2018 bond projects and a potential future bond referendum for any of you, those of you who are interested. So the capital project update provided uh, information on the funding that we've provided for general government projects over the last 10 years. This, the status of projects, which were categorized into three tiers, which um, we'll show you here shortly, uh, talked about the departmental workloads related to the projects and tiers. Uh, we looked at our currently unfunded projects for what you know where we may need resources in the future, and then talked about the current challenges of our environment, which we've talked we've already talked about uh, quite a bit today. Um, so just for um, some additional information, on top of the $261 million that we did with the, the two bond referendums in 2014 and 2018, we've also appropriated $180 million in funding for projects, uh, a total of $441 million over in the past 10 years, less than 10 years. Um, and this doesn't include appropriations for water, sewer, stormwater, or solid waste disposal, which are we have, we have uh, very large uh, <clears throat> project appropriations in those areas as well. Um, so the t talking a little bit about the tiers that we broke the projects into, a tier tier one is a is a key work item for the city staff um, or a project designated as a high priority by the city manager, typically with city council input. Tier two are projects that are currently funded, but at this time are a lower priority. Uh, and then tier three is unfunded project requests from, from staff and council. So on the, uh, as this was broken down a couple of months ago, the uh, Tier one has 101 projects with a total budget of a little over 200 million. Tier two has a, almost 200 projects with a, a total budget of 141 million. As noted, these these the funding for these projects is coming from many sources. Um, it's just to um, it was just to kind of show the the how many projects we have and um, the limited resources we have to do 297 projects total um kind of the where we're headed here so in the tier one there the 2018 bond projects in tier one are the multi-use path business 40 corridor improvements liberty and main street two-way conversion first and second two-way conversion polo road concrete uh, bay streets rehabilitation little creek greenway Salem Creek uh, Greenway, the side path area there, uh, Bethania Rural Hall Pocket Park. And so, Brian, kind of to your point, that a lot of these transportation projects are on the Tier 1, and they are a priority. So, Tanik McCullough, who was our, in, our Winston Department of Transportation Director, she retired. Um, and Jeff Fansler, who was the deputy presented to you a while back, he is now the, the director. Um, so, uh, he's... All of those those projects are a very high priority for him. Um, then also these these uh, all, these are also on the the tier one list: uh, Salem Lake Park, Quarry Park, Washington Park, Haynes Park, East on Park restrooms, 
the two fire stations and the public safety training complex. And some of these are already complete. So some of them have been completed since we started to put this report together for council um, a while back. So you can see there are a number of, of the 18 projects that are still a high priority. Uh, who is doing these tier one projects from a departmental standpoint? So our engineering department has the, the bulk or a, a, a significant chunk of these. That's Robert Presswood's team. A number of them are also uh, under the purview of our property and facilities management team. Those are primarily maintenance related facility maintenance projects. And then there are uh, recreation and parks, uh, stormwater, uh, et cetera. So that's who's got kind of the tier one responsibilities. So then you move into tier two. This is kind of where the, so the 18 bond projects in tier two, uh, many of these are the holding pots that we've kind of got sitting there uh, to be allocated when needed. Um, and so at the current time, we're planning to address some of these as projects from tier one are completed and reprioritized re by staff and, and council. Um, but I mean, you can see, I mean, the public safety radio communication system is a tier two project. That one's basically the county's doing that work. We're just, we're, we're, we're paying for, uh, as an example project on this, uh, this tier two list. And then there's, there's also the, the kind of the, the buckets for economic development and, and, um, and then also the some of the housing kind of holding code buckets. And then who's who's doing those projects? That's where the tier two, Jeff Fansler's got his work cut out for him. Um, he's got 47 of those. And then there, there are other the 41 kind of maintenance projects from our property facilities management uh, perspective. And then we just wanted to show you that at the time, a couple of months ago, the tier where what was the status of the tier two projects? So 160 of those 196 were just really in the planning stage. And there were nine in procurement and 27 in construction. So we've got a long way to go with a lot of those. Um, you know, we appropriated money for those. There was a, a project tied to it and um, intent to do it. And so we're trying to manage all of, we're trying to manage the tier one high priorities with, all, with also keeping these tier two projects visible so that they get done in as timely a fashion as possible as well. Uh, so then you get into what's un, currently unfunded. The, you can see the sidewalk, the construction repair. This is an estimate that came out of a report a while back over half of half a billion dollars worth of sidewalk uh, repair and construction, uh, road improvement projects, almost 300 million, affordable housing, just under 200 million, street resurfacing, fire station uh, facilities, about 70 million. Then you get into needs at the fairgrounds, bridge replacements, stormwater improvements, uh, et cetera. It's overall, uh, it's like $1.3 billion worth of kind of unfunded current needs uh, that have been identified by staff and or uh, council members uh, at, at this time. So then kind of based on this, um, we're anticipating another bond referendum in 2026 uh, and with the likelihood of a, of a capital needs committee being formed to help us figure out what are the biggest priorities from a um, a citizen perspective, make sure we're addressing the highest needs there. And then after November 2026, if a bond referendum passes, hopefully another citizens bond oversight committee. So everybody get excited, keep that on your radar, take a couple year break, <laughs> recharge your batteries, um, enjoy all the other projects getting done, and then come back. So Mike, I do. I want to add two things. This, the overall context of this information, as it was given to City Council, when Mike was showing you Tier One and Tier Two, 
what was coming out was as far as the recent history of the city, we have more projects than we've ever had and the lowest level of staffing that we've ever had. And so it is trying to manage that workload while at a level of 20% vacancy, both from a capital perspective and an operations perspective that's causing the city current problems. And when you get to the unfunded list, uh, you know, so much of this uh, is from a transportation perspective. When Mike showed you a half a billion dollars worth of sidewalks, we all know the city has no capacity or ability to build a half a billion dollars worth of sidewalks. It's Anytime anything is requested or identified by staff or city council, it's added to that list. So there would be, uh, before this, another Citizens Capital Needs Committee looking at the highest priorities, potentially for another uh, general obligation uh, referendum. But when you look at that overall list of unfunded, 90 plus percent of it is just in transportation infrastructure, housing, uh, and fire station facilities. So those are the largest areas just to try and take that two pages worth of tabular data down. And DOT has a, a lot of needs both for maintenance and for infrastructure development. Affordable housing continues to be one of the highest priorities of city council. Uh, and there are potentially some needs in public safety that are arising for some of our older facilities. Question. Ha has there been any discussion at the council level about funding options beyond what we could do in a bond referendum. I'm thinking about things that have been talked about in the past, payroll taxes or things like that. Has there been any conversation about any of that yet? So the payroll tax is one I know that is used outside of the state of North Carolina. I don't think that we have general authority to do that, Gail. There are a couple of other things. The motor vehicle privilege tax is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, the way that the General Assembly has structured that authority, we would essentially have to use it exclusively for street resurfacing, uh, but that is potentially being looked at. Um, we are both in the capital plan for this year and potentially for next year. Uh, doing some PAYGO financing in very small amounts. We do some short-term leasing through North Carolina municipal leasing for some of the projects. Um, but at a very high level, I don't know that we're, other than motor vehicle privilege tax, looking at other funding sources other than potentially raising the property tax rate to fund general obligation debt issuances. I am going to have to leave the meeting okay thank you, brenda we knew you had to go thank you so much for accommodating us here virtually this morning and being here while we went through this so was, and thank you very 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 much for all of your hard work and input over the past four years it's my pleasure it's been a great team and hopefully we'll come together again soon take care brenda, brenda. it's been good time it has been absolutely. Y'all have a great day. Hey, Brenda, before you go, just remember before there's the review committee, there's also the committee to pass the bonds. So don't forget that part. Uh, exactly. Well, and, and Brenda, <laughs> before, before any of that, before as any of that, Brenda, as... I would invite you to join us on the 9th if you're available um, for the presentation to the Finance Committee. Okay. Uh, for some reason, there's something going. I'll check it for sure. Okay. Just let us know. Good to see you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Take Brenda. Care, Brenda. Bye. Mark, thank you for uh, mentioning that there. Um, that is the um, the next place we were going to go. Um, was just to, to kind of uh, follow up on the, for, there will be a presentation of the final report. Um, I would say a brief presentation, Mark, and mm -hmm. um, It'll be on the agenda May 9th for the Finance City Council's Finance Committee meeting. It'll be here in City Hall uh, starting at 4 p.m. in the council chambers. Um, but I'm not sure where it'll be on the agenda, but it'll be you pro providing that brief report. And then it will, as you had mentioned, there will also be the resolution dissolving uh, the committee. So, um, do I do I present the resolution or do they already have that resolution? They'll have that. They will have that. You'll do the presentation and then uh, they'll do a, a recommendation on the resolution. Okay. A recommendation to the full council. So, um, 
Any questions yeah. about that? Yeah, for you and Brian, I, I would also encourage you, to, if you're available, to come on the 9th and be recognized by uh, the Finance Committee for all your work. I, I yep. plan to be there. Oh, good. I'm adding it to the schedule. Sweet. Hopefully they'll put us first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I know the last the last one, it, it would look like it was the second to last, the uh second to last item on the agenda when the 2014 committee I, did their I saw up. that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I will do my best to work with the uh, the city clerk and the manager's office to ensure that's as close to the top of the general agenda as we can get it. That'd be great. Thank you. Well, so, I, and I'd, I'd like to thank all of you too. I mean, it's been it's been a four year ride. It's been weird, right, with COVID and everything else that that happened during this time. And you guys have been participatory, and your comments have been good. Your thoughts have been good. I mean, it's. Uh, the, the, that's Ryan, as you said, the committee has shrunk over the over the years, but I think the folks that participated at any point during that time, they were valuable members of the, of the committee, and, and, and you certainly are at the top of that list. Thank you. Yeah, so that we wanted to say from a staff perspective that we really appreciate your time, hard work, input, and guidance. I mean, your the engagement, you all were very, very engaged and you cared about this and um that was very helpful to us and brian like like you said you all were kind of ambassadors for these projects in the community and we need more of that uh or as much of that as we can get out there so um yeah from a staff perspective and ben wanted me to to also uh, share his thanks he's not he was not able to be here today uh, so um, he was he's very appreciative of, of you all as well. Wonderful. Well, very nice job on putting this together. Um, I, mean, I know it takes a lot of work to put all this stuff on, not only on paper, but then into a presentation format. So we appreciate that. Um, I think I think all we've got left, let me get back to the agenda. I think all we've got left on the agenda is adjourning, I think. Yep, that's unless, it. Unless anyone else has other um, questions or comments or feedback, as it says on the slide. Yeah, or feedback. We have to answer. No, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I wish more people understood how hard it is when when staffing isn't where it needs to be for city. You know, I mean, I mean, we get it once a quarter, and and I think I think we I know I project it whenever I talk to. Macintosh or anybody, and I know there's some people that get it and some that don't, but I mean, I appreciate everything you guys have done, even, you know, shorthanded at times, certainly changes in, in responsibilities over the four years and everything. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I think that will, that will wrap us up for today. We have to see everyone on the ninth. Um, I don't think we need a vote to adjourn that uh, we had in the past at least so i will call us adjourned and um and thank you again for all your work thank you all thanks guys all right. bye thank you